We're talking now with Chris Fluke, who was recently in Marathon, Florida Keys, who was speaking at a seminar for the Marine Invasive Species in Southeast Florida. And it was a seminar at which Chris was a keynote guest speaker. The idea of this conference was to try and get all the government and non-government departments together in Florida to start looking at um, some of the invasive species they've seen off the coast of Florida. There were representatives from REEF, the uh, REEF Educational Environmental Foundation, uh, NOAA, which is the National Oceanographic Adm Atmospheric Administration, and some other state and federal officials there from different departments and things like that. Basically, I was asked to speak about the proactive um, initiative that we've started here in Bermuda and the fact that we've seen lionfish showing up in the Atlantic, and a lot of people are now studying this and trying to find out what the effect of these fish are going to have on the local fish populations. Um, Bermuda is actually behind on the invasion, but we're way ahead as far as, far as proactive management. Um, we've taken a stand here that we're never going to get rid of them completely. We understand that, but if we could uh, potentially manage the population of lionfish here, it will take the pressure off the juvenile fish that are naturally found here. The big concern with lionfish, everybody automatically thinks they're poisonous, dangerous fish. That's a very small part of the problem. The real big problem is that they're going to outcompete all the, um, the, the sort of commercially viable fish, like the snappers and the groupers. They're going to outcompete them for the food, and they're going to completely eradicate certain species of fish off the reef, some of the smaller species um, that are key in the whole sort of trophic level, uh, different trophic levels that you'll see in the environment. Um, you take one little key out of that big puzzle, and it can have devastating effects. I'm leading the, um, the sort of the, the initiative here in Bermuda. Uh, I'm the collector of specimens for the aquarium. I've been the collector here for about 12 years. And, you know, I always thought lionfish were a cool, pretty fish, um, you know, nice and easy to keep in tanks. Um, we started seeing them here showing up in around 2000. We had some early reports, unconfirmed and things like that. And I think, you know, people need to understand that, yeah, the lionfish have been seen in the Atlantic for quite some time now. But now they're at a critical mass where they're actually repopulating themselves and they've really exploded. Um, down in the Bahamas, where the water temperature is warm, the females there are dumping about 30,000 eggs every month. In four days they hatch, and in one year they can breed. Now, you put that compared to like conies and grazebees, the natural smaller group of species here, it takes three to five years or so for them to get old enough to breed. So not only are lionfish competing for habitat and food, they're also populating the reefs a lot faster than the natural fish would. Chris, tell me, do the lionfish have any natural predators here in Bermuda? As far as predators in the Atlantic, um, there's only been uh, a couple of groupers that have been found with a lionfish in the stomach, and that actually leads to more questions than answers. Would these fish eat another lionfish ever again? I don't think so, and the fact that they produce um, some sort of amino acid as a precaution for things not to eat them, but then the spines and the venom is the secondary defense. Um, anything that ever eats a lionfish, I can pretty much guarantee would never eat another one. Um, there's only one fish that's been confirmed from the Philippines that eats lionfish, and you've got to think of them on the same line as groupers and sharks. So they're feeding down the food chain. You might have that occasional cross predation between sharks and groupers and things like that, but most times they're feeding down the food chain. And, you know, so lionfish aren't really being attacked hard by any other predator apart from humans. Um, and you know, they're, they're, their appetite is, is unbelievable. In a confined tank, you can actually feed lionfish to death. We caught one lionfish uh, in the Bahamas that was probably about maybe six inches long, and he had 26 white grunts, what we call white grunts here, which is actually the tomtate, 26 grunts in his stomach. Um, these were all sort of two to three inch grunts. So, I mean, you imagine that volume was for a six inch fish to have that many fish in his stomach. It's quite staggering. The fish, the juvenile fish in the Pacific, see them as a threat, so the lionfish have to work very hard to eat their food. So what they do is they gorge. When they've got a chance, they'll eat as much as they can. Uh, unfortunately, the, the small fish in the Atlantic have never seen lionfish, so they're not used to them as a predator. They're very naive, and what happens is these lionfish are programmed to gorge when they can, because they might not get food tomorrow, so to speak. Um, so what they're doing is they're gorging constantly in, in the Atlantic. Uh, we're finding that in their natural range, they only get 10 to 13 inches, but uh, we had one boron brought in from a, a wreck just this weekend, 17 inches. Um, that's staggering. There is a potential that you will learn, lose certain species of fish from the Atlantic. Um, these things have now shown up. Um, the two epicenters of the invasion have been Bahamas and the sort of the coast of Florida, uh, sort of the, the Fort Lauderdale area. Um, from there, now they've moved as far north as Long Island. Um, they don't actually make it through the winter because it gets too cold. 
Um, but down south in the Bahamas and stuff like that, they're breeding very fast, and they've actually shown up now in the Caymans, the, the backside of Cuba. So they're going to be starting to move their way up into the Gulf. Once they get into the Gulf, it's going to be very warm water, shallow, lots of small fish. They are going to go nuts, and I don't think there's any question that they will lose certain species of fish, some of the smaller species. And a lot of countries are looking at our model here um, and what we're trying to do here to you know, potentially manage them. And it, you know, it's held Bermuda in a really good light. I think it's only natural that we've taken this move because Bermuda's got some of the earliest conservation laws. Bermuda was settled in 1609. In 1620, they made the first laws against taking juvenile green turtles. In 1623, that's only a short time after they first came to Bermuda, people here were starving and they couldn't grow crops because the wild turkeys were eating the crops. So back in 1623, they actually prevented the importation of turkeys to protect the stock, the uh, the, the you know sort of the crop stocks here. Um, that's that's quite a, a bold move. So you know by Bermuda taking this stance early on in this invasion, I think it's you know it's only fitting, uh, but it's put us in really good light. A lot of people are looking at us to see how it's going to pan out for us. Chris, what has the government's response been to this problem of the lionfish here in Bermuda? The government's response here has been fantastic. I mean, we, we've sort of noted the problem. We've seen the effects that they've had elsewhere. And, you know, we've really taken a stand early on in things. I mean, it's been very inspiring. Um, the public outcry has been tremendous. I mean, we've had some really good support from a bunch of uh, private organizations, a bunch of the dive operators, Making Waves. Stuart Joplin from Making Waves has really put his heart out for this. Um, it's been fantastic. He's um, donated some gear and the support has been just tremendous. Tell us about these new licenses that have been created uh, for members of the public. What the government has started here is we've started a, a bold response to this lionfish issue and the fact that we've got uh, special licenses made now uh, for trained divers to be able to go out and, and cull these animals. Um, by taking these animals out of the natural environment, basically we can learn a lot from them. We can do stomach contents, we can find out their age by doing the, the growth rings in the otoliths, which are the ear bones. Um, we can start to look at when they're actually spawning in Bermuda. There's three things that really pay in our favor in Bermuda and the fact that we're relatively small. We've got 200 square miles of reef platform. We've got a lot of resources. You, any given weekend, you see how many boats are out and divers and everything else. And then also the seasonality of our temperature. So they're not spawning all year here, but you know we need fish to be able to sort of scientifically prove this. But all the fish that we've been seeing are spawning in the summer, and in the winter they're not. Um, so by having licensed divers to be able to, you know, to go out and deal with these fish is a really good move in the fact that we can get lots of bodies and find out what these fish are exactly are doing here to be able to potentially hit them from other angles as well. Chris, what is the overall goal when it comes to dealing with a lionfish? Can we eradicate it? The issue is never going to be eradication. We're never going to get rid of these fish. It's an ongoing thing. But at the same time, it's you know we have the potential to manage them here where other places probably wouldn't. Um, that's going to put us in a really good standing in a few years in the fact that it's going to be great for our fishing. It's going to be great for our diving. So tourism is going to flock here. Um, the way it's looking now in the Bahamas, they're looking at a potential collapse in their commercial fishing industry, which will lead to a collapse in their diving industry, which is huge tourism. Um, thing there for them, you know. The divers that we had licensed um, and trained to be able to go out and deal with these fish, we had a special flag made so that, you know, th to let people know that a diving operation is going on and that it, they are dealing with just lionfish. If you see these flags out on the water, please stay well clear. Um, there will be people using spears and um, dealing with these hazardous fish, so just be careful. So you got the dive flag on this side the red and white, and then the black and uh, yellow with the lionfish there just to show that that's what the, um, the sort of dive operation is going on right there. I would say anybody who sees a lionfish, uh, please report them. We've got um, two, two ways you can uh, sort of call in the report to us. We've got a phone number, which is 293-4464, extension 820. Uh, please report all sightings there, um, depths, you know, where you were, when, how many you saw, things like that. Your name and contact number is definitely has to go in there as well, so we can contact you for more information, um, or at lionfish at gov.bm. Uh, that's an email address that we set up so that people can report sightings. Please, if you haven't been trained, don't handle these fish. They are very venomous. Um, if you are stung by one of these fish, you've got to put wherever you've been stung in as hot water as you can tolerate without scalding yourself and seek immediate at medical attention. Um, the young kids, the elderly, and anybody who's allergic to bee stings should take a particular caution. Um, the venom, 
we haven't actually had uh, any confirmed reports of somebody dying from a lionfish sting at this point worldwide, um, but the venom is very toxic. I mean, it's nasty stuff. I've been stung twice. Um, the, the pain lasts, I mean, it's excruciating for about an hour. Um, and, you know, the swelling is immediate, and the swelling took about two months for it to subside, and it's been about six months now, and I'm still having complications where I was stung. Um, so these aren't fish to be messing around with. Please, if you're not trained or whatever, please call us in the sightings. We'll come remove them, no problem. But just be very careful with these fish.